it's good to see you again. Thank you for letting me join you once more for our little visit together. I enjoy it. I hope you do. This is a period of time here at the seminary when uh, we've done some memory work at the seminary. Uh, at one point, a few days ago, we had uh, a reference to one of the great theologians of the 20th century, Albert Outler, who probably knew more about John Wesley and the whole Methodist movement than any other personality in the 20th century. That's a pretty fair guess anyway, and it wouldn't be too hard to make a case for it. I wanted our people here at the seminary to know something about a man who had been such a profound scholar about Wesley and the Methodist movement. And then this week, one of our schools here within the seminary, the E. Stanley Jones School, named for a man that could well have been seen, as many of them have professed him to be, uh, one of the greatest missionaries, one of the greatest evangelists, one of the greatest Christian statesmen of the 20th century. Our school, the E. Stanley Jones School at Asbury Seminary, uh, is celebrating its 25th anniversary now. And so we had a variety of celebrations for that anniversary time. And one of the speakers was a man, Dr. Stephen Graham, who has written uh, a, an approved and a classic biography, I think, about E. Stanley Jones. What blessed me was the chance to remember two great leaders in the faith of Christ in the century that had just passed, the 20th century. What bothered me is that there was not more interest on the part of a contemporary body of students. I should have expected as much, I suppose, because this is one of the marks of our times. Uh, it is a common comment now among students of uh, social observance, uh, of people who are watching the history of human thought as it unrolls, is that a current generation, indeed perhaps two portions of our changing culture, two bodies of time, have the same mood of virtual indifference to what has happened in the past. They wouldn't flat out say it, but it's there. They simply don't recognize references to what happened 25 years ago, to say nothing of 50 years ago. They may have a vague perception that there was once a World War II and that there has been a Korean War, a Vietnamese War, that there was a president once named Eisenhower and a president named Jimmy Carter. They know about him because he's still around part of the time. Uh, but they have no recollection, perhaps, at all of someone named Herbert Hoover or Franklin Delano Roosevelt, who held the office of the presidency longer than any person has or ever will since our law has been changed. History goes on and some refuse to give any time to the thought of it. That's tragic. It's tragic, of course, on the one hand, because if you don't know what's happened in the past and what mistakes have led us to the problems we now have, you're liable to repeat those mistakes. In fact, you're almost certain to do so. If you don't know, on the other hand, what good has been done in the past and how that past blesses us still today, you will, for one thing, have no sense of gratitude. You have to know what people have done for you in the past so that you have a healthy degree of humility to know that the world wasn't born just for you. It wasn't born just for this generation. The world has been in existence for a long time leading up to you and me. And we owe something to all of that past. A great humility comes for us. And with that, an appreciation of what the past by the grace of God has given us and how, because good things have been done by godly people in the past, there is a chance, if we look at their example, that we can do some godly things again. So I'm pleading to you today 
to begin to pay more attention to where we've come from. Read some history, history of the church, biographies and autobiographies, and history of what's happened in our world so that we'll learn to avoid the mistakes and the errors, the stupidities of the past, and we'll learn to be thankful for the good and that we'll be willing and ready to repeat the good to make it still better in the time in which we live. That's what's on my thought today, and that's what's in my mind, and I hope you'll take it to your mind too. Thank you, and God bless.